Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. It is Drew here from Lone Fox, and today's video is such an exciting one. First of all, it is the first kind of makeover in my new apartment series that I'm doing here on my channel. This is the horror movie room makeover. This, guys, is what I call the horror movie room. My roommate and I literally do not know what this is for. So I gave this room the name of the horror movie room because it was just scary, it was dark, it was random. There was no point to it. I was just very, very confused as to what it was. And I get asked all the time, what are you doing with the horror movie room? And I'm like, just wait. And I am just so excited and also grateful because today's video is sponsored by Big Lots, which is so amazing. They have such an incredible new line of decor by Broyhill at Big Lots, and it is to die for you guys. You are going to be freaking obsessed with the decor. I'm gonna share the actual decor pieces a little bit later and I'm going to link them all below for you guys, but they are so affordable. They are aesthetic, they are cute, they are extremely amazing quality. And did I mention affordable? Because they are affordable. If you have never heard of Roy Hill before, it is in line of affordable but high quality home decor that is actually great for honestly any style. Like I would definitely say all the pieces that I got for this makeover are perfect to kind of implement for your own style and they adapt really well to so many different styles as well. And all of the pieces are available to shop online, which I have them linked below for you guys. And you can either have them shipped to your home, so you can just get them right at home, or you can do a curbside pickup as well. If you have a local big lots, you can actually pick up these items at your local store. I think it's gonna look so good in the end. So honestly, this intro needs to be over with. We need to get started with this makeover, so let's do so. I am currently standing outside of the horror movie room, and I'm going to share with you guys kind of like a before of this room to show you what it looks like. Now, so many of you gave such amazing recommendations, and I'm keeping all of those in mind while creating creating and designing this room. A lot of you guys said to do a bar area, a greenhouse situation, a reading nook. There's a ton of different suggestions and I kind of want to honestly mix a lot of those into one room. But let me go ahead and share with you guys what it looks like. So this is what the exterior of the room looks like. There are these like window panels, I guess you could say, on each side, the left and the right side. And there's also this door here, which of course can close, but I feel like we're probably just going to leave it open a majority of the time. So it's just easily, you know, accessible. And then there's a large window here. Um, and then basically in side. This is what the inside of the space looks like. This is the left side here. This literally looks like a creepy face, like another aspect of the horror movie room. And then over here, it looks like this. And there is a mirror on this side. As you can see, guys, inserting clip right here of what I found in there a couple weeks ago. Oh my gosh, you guys, there is something back there. <laughs> I don't even want to touch it. Like, what if something comes out? It's a curtain. Oh, these have been back here for like a hundred years. I swear, if something comes out of here, I'm gonna move. That's everything. Okay, it's not a dress. I literally could have sworn that was gonna be a dress. Like, someone's, whoever lived in here, like, died and their dress was put up there. Like. So basically what I did was I emailed to the landlord and he is just the nicest ever. So I emailed him and I was like, hi, can we paint the horror movie room, like the wood room off the dining room? Is it possible we could paint it? And basically he said, yes, you guys can do literally whatever you want to that room. So we have the go and the green light to essentially paint this space, which is really, really nice. So that's basically what I want to kind of accomplish today with the space is fully painting it. Now, as you could probably see, these walls are kind of shiny. I'm not sure if it comes off on camera. It has like a shiny like gloss to the top of them. And I thought first that I might need to get a deglosser to put on top of these wood panels in order to be able to paint over it. And lastly, before painting, I do want to mention that I'm going to be keeping this wood trim here. So the wood trim on this window is actually really pretty. It's kind of hard to see just because the window's here, but this wood trim here is actually kind of like a distressed dark wood, which I really like. This wood here is just a very like kind of orangey, almost cherryish wood, which is not my favorite. So I do want to keep that. And then I'm also thinking about keeping this edging here around the inside frame, um, but painting all of these window areas because these are all super like brown and ugly. So those need to be painted white as well. so strange because look this cabinet literally goes to nothing there's a ledge right here and then there's a big opening back there this room is just so odd whoever had this prior i don't exactly know what they used it for So a 
about an hour has passed and the room is fully prepped. Everything is taped off that is not being painted and the floor is also fully covered in plastic just to keep it nice and protected. But as you can see, I'm not gonna be painting these exterior like molding areas, just this wood section, because I like this wood color, not a fan of all of this wood. So I'm gonna keep this and I'm gonna keep the window sill like I mentioned. To prime this wall, I actually had to use a brush first to go in and really kind of stipple the primer into the little like spaces between the wood. And then right after I did that, I smoothed it out using a foam roller. And that's kind of like the key to get a smooth finish on this is using a foam roller. All right, so here's our progress so far. Um, I'm working this way, Marie's working that direction. Also guys, Marie and I are talking about how this stuff actually smells really good. Like I think we're gonna potentially get high off of the fumes because it smells like Sharpie mixed with something that I've smelled before, but I don't know what it is. White out. Oh, white out and Sharpie mixed. That's, this is white out. This <laughs> is what white out is made of. and the room is fully primed. This literally took like five hours to prime this room, but it is pretty much all the way white. Like of course it is streaky because it's just a primer. And I also went ahead and did all of the window frames as well. So everything is completely covered now with the primer. I'm gonna let this go ahead and dry overnight since it's already pretty late anyways, and then do the actual paint coat tomorrow, which is gonna be super exciting. I'm hoping Maybe we'll get one coat. I just thought of the best life hack ever. So if you have one of these, I just saw this on the countertop and I was like, okay, let's just pull this off. Oh wait, oh wait, it's slippery. Okay, just kidding, it doesn't work. Cut. Good morning guys, it's day two of the horror movie room makeover and the primer has of course dried overnight. So today is going to be the day for painting. Literally my vlog camera right now, the new one, keep in mind, has like paint all over it. I'm trying to like scrape it off. Um, but yeah, I think we're just gonna head over into the other room and basically put a full coat of the paint on and I'm gonna share with you guys which paint that we are using in the room as well. I swear to you right now, I'm gonna drop my vlog camera. It's gonna go right in the middle right there. So I'm gonna try my hardest not to, but this is the paint color that we are using. I'm not sure like if we're gonna need one coat or two coats depending on the primer, because as you can see, it's pretty splotchy still. few hours later and the complete second coat has now been added to the walls and this is what it's looking like so far. I also went ahead and did like a sample on the ceiling to see if the color was different and as you can tell it is very different so I'm gonna go ahead and roll the entire ceiling off the camera as well. I feel like I've been showing so much of the painting process already and it's probably just very repetitive and a bit boring so I think I'm gonna pop back in once the room is completely and fully painted. Good morning, everybody. You might notice that this room looks a little bit different and that is because it is, it's probably been like two days since last talking to you guys. It was Mother's Day yesterday, now it is Monday today. I went ahead and rolled everything on additional time. So now there's two coats on the entire wall and then I also did two coats on the ceiling as well, but I didn't want to just like keep filming myself painting. So it is basically done now and I'm gonna share it with you guys, I guess right now. But the fun part is, is we get to take off the tape and kind of like see what the room looks like without the tape because you know, this green tape is also not that cute at the moment. So we're gonna take that off too, but I'm really excited for this reveal because this is really gonna change the room the most. So let's go ahead and remove the tape.
all the tape is gone and guys look how amazing this room looks painted so as you know i kept the wooden frame here just because i liked this wood i thought it was like really interesting kind of looks distressed a little bit as you can see we got paint on it but it adds character so it's fine i just love the color of this wood and i also went ahead and kept this trim here as you can see all the way around the door and honestly guys i feel like it is time to decorate because this space is pretty small so i'm not going to be like putting any big furniture in here. I actually plan on DIYing a bench tomorrow. So I think tomorrow I'm gonna go ahead and start decorating this space. I'm gonna DIY a bench for you guys. You guys are gonna see me in like three seconds, but I'm gonna see you tomorrow, so yeah. Good morning guys, it is decorating day, which is such an exciting day for me. I'm obsessed with the decorating day of any makeover. It's probably my favorite one because I feel like this is a day where everything you've done kind of comes together and you really get to see everything kind of shine together and the room is kind of completed at this point. And like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, it is actually sponsored by Big Lots, which I'm just so grateful for because I just absolutely love the products that they send over and they're gonna be perfect, perfect decor additions to this space. These pieces are from a line at Big Lots called Broyhill, which is a great, great collection of like super affordable, but also very high quality, timeless pieces that can kind of match any style. And also a great option is that when you are shopping online, if you guys find some things that you may like, you could do a curbside pickup if you want to. So you can literally go pick it up at the store or you can just have them shipped directly to you, which is amazing. So there's two different options, but I'm gonna do like a quick little decor haul to share with you guys the pieces that I picked up. And again, everything's going to be linked in the description box below for you guys. I'm gonna start off with the throw pillows because they are probably two of my favorite items that I got. And this is the Halima Outdoor Macrame Throw Pillow. It is so pretty. Guys, look at this pillow. I am just obsessed with the macrame on this. It's also super soft and it is perfect for indoor as well. Then I got the Sedia Tan Striped Outdoor Lumbar Pillow, which kind of correlates back to the other one perfectly. Like see how great these are gonna go together. This one's really cute. It's like a woven fabric on the front and it has a little bit of this detail on it, which is kind of like a little pom-pom puffy on the front, if you will. Now in this space, I'm going to be doing a mixture of faux plants and real plants. And that's just because I want to put a lot of plants in here, but honestly guys, like I'm I'm just letting you know right now, I do not have a green thumb at all. So I need to focus on like two plants in that space that are real and the other ones can be faux. So I actually got two of them in the Broyhill range. This is a greenery plant in a ceramic ribbed pot. I'm literally telling you guys the exact name so you can find it on their site, but it's gonna be linked below too. This is what that looks like. It's so cute. This just reminds me of some sort of like mod, like 60s vibe or something. I think it's so unique and fun. And the actual greenery of their faux plants is incredible. It's like that soft touch one that really feels real. And then I also got a larger one. This is the Fiddle big potted plant which is really perfect for the space because my accent color in there is navy because I actually picked up a navy rug which I'll talk about next and the top of this just has this faux fiddle plant which looks a thousand percent real. I mentioned that it goes back to the rug and I got the Manor Navy Runner, which I'll put an overlay of it here. It's a little too large to hold up, but it is basically a runner rug and it is perfect. It kind of has like a little bit of a vintage touch to it, but I love the tone of navy in it. Navy is kind of my main accent color in the space. Then I got two ceramic vases and these are the ivory ceramic vases, but guys, look how pretty these are. They are first of all, very large and they're very affordable. They kind of have a rougher glaze towards the bottom here, which I love in ceramics when they're glazed differently. So you have like the shiny, kind of top and then a matte bottom here. Perfect for like flower stems or whatever you want to put in here. I'm actually just going to leave them as is and kind of just style them on a shelf. For the bar area, I got this black galvanized tray with wood handles. It is just a large scale tray and it looks like this. Super cute. It has wooden handles on it and it's going to be perfect to hold all of the alcoholic beverage jaws. I got a couple of wood items kind of to tie back to that window ledging. So this one is a nice wooden box with jute rope handle. It is so cute. It's like a little wall shelf. So as you can see, it looks like this. The back actually has keyholes on it. And this, this is, and then this piece is kind of just decorative hanging on there. And I also got this wooden decorative orb, which is just kind of like a decor element. I liked the geometric pattern in this and I thought it was really unique. I've never seen something like this where it's made of wood. I also got this copper Moscow mule shaker set. You guys look how stunning this is. I, Moscow Mules are my favorite drink in the entire world, so I wanted to get the Moscow Mule mugs. They have a golden handle too, which I love that, but it also comes with the shaker and it's like a copper tone. This is just going to look so pretty and warm in the space. I picked up a candle. This is the Broyhill Apricot and Honey Candle. I loved the color of the vessel on the outside, but it also 
smells amazing. It's like a very strong candle, but you can tell that when you light it, it's just going to make the room smell like the perfect amount of scent. All right, so those are all of the decor pieces. I'm going to link all of them below for you guys to take a look at if you are curious. Um, and I want to thank Big Lots again so much for sponsoring this video. Like the pieces are so cute and I'm so excited that they sent them over to me. I'm going to go ahead and get to decorating because I honestly want to see what this room looks like. So let's go. <laughs> It is time to DIY a focal point of this room, and I found this tutorial by The Rehab Life. I will link her video below for you guys, but the tools and supplies you're going to need are one 10-foot 2x8 piece of wood, two 8-foot 2x4 pieces of wood, two and a quarter inch wood screws, and then just some wood stain. So what I started off by doing was actually sawing my wood down to size. I am not a construction worker, guys, so this is a <laughs> construction worker? Like, what? I mean, I am not a- oh my gosh, I'm gonna call myself a contractor! Basically, you're gonna need wood that is cut exactly as shown here. This is gonna create the legs and I'm using these two and a quarter inch wood screws. And the nice thing about these screws is that they actually don't require you to pre-drill a hole. You can actually just screw them right in. And I had no like problems with this at all. So I basically just screwed these together in a box shape, the similar shape that I had laid them out in prior to show you the sizes. I added two screws to each end of the wood and just made sure that they were securely fastened together. And it's just gonna create a strong bond cube. I then grabbed a little bit of like medium grit sandpaper and just sanded all of the kind of more rougher edges. This is going to be the leg section. So it didn't need too much sanding. I feel like I focused more on the seat, which this is the seat here. I actually cut a 10 foot two by eight in half and I made them five foot long each and then laid it down. And I'm basically now just gonna be screwing screws into the legs and onto the base. I am so bad. Rachel Metz, where are you? Please help me. I then grabbed a ruler and measured the distance from the leg to the edge and did the same exact distance on the opposite side. That way they looked perfect. And I screwed four screws in to create the base. Just made a bench. Of course it looks very uneven because we're on top of this cobblestone. What is this called? Rock. Rocks? We're on top of rocks. I also went back in with my sandpaper and gave this a nice sanding. I wish I had an electric sander, which I think I'm gonna invest in, but I just went ahead and gave it a nice sanding because people are gonna be sitting on this. So you're gonna want this to be pretty smooth. And now this is my favorite part. This is really what changed the entire bench. I'm actually mixing up about two thirds part of early American, which is that middle color. And then one third part of espresso, which is a darker color to create this like medium toned, really dark color. It looks so pretty. I just love the way that this color looked in the end. I went back outside, brought my stain with me and grab some paper towels to apply the stain. I only needed one coat of stain on this entire bench and it ended up just such a stunning color. It's like a darker sort of mid-century tone, which I really love. And I wanted it a little bit darker than usual just because the window seal wood that I didn't end up painting was pretty dark as well. So I didn't want too many wood tones going on in there. So I tried to match the same tone of wood. Alright guys, I just finished decorating the room and I am so excited to share it with you. I'm trying to hide the room a little bit, but I'm going to go ahead and reveal it to you guys in 3, 2, 1.
you guys enjoyed today's video. This was such a fun makeover. It was probably one of the most random, oddest rooms I've ever done, but honestly, the horror movie room does not look very scary anymore. I am very happy with the outcome of it, and I think it looks really amazing for what we were able to do. I honestly think one of my favorite parts in this room is the DIY bench that I created. I cannot believe this literally cost only $20. Like, it looks very expensive, and I think it looks so cute. Plus, all of the Big Lots decor that they were able to send over just made this room honestly pop so much. I love all the decor elements in here. Since this space is on the smaller side, I just wanted to add one kind of focal furniture piece, which of course is the bench, because what else are you going to add in here? I thought the bench was a perfect touch under the window, and the pillows accent it so nicely. Everything I did feature in this video is going to be linked in the description box for you guys, so take a look below, and if you are not already, make sure to subscribe to my channel for brand new home decor and DIY videos every single week. You could also follow me over on Instagram for more behind-the-scenes stuff, which is just Lone Fox Home. I post photos and stories almost every single day over there, so definitely follow along, and I will catch you guys all in my next video. Have an amazing rest of your day and stay safe everybody bye guys one last huge thank you to big lots for sponsoring today's video and i hope that you guys really love this one